The Backbone. Is it a revolution in mobile gaming or did I just waste a hundred bucks? Let's find out. So in this video, I wanna kinda of get into the nuts and bolts of, is this a good controller? Is it a good option for your phone, specifically your iPhone, because it's only for iPhones? Can it even replace a console, if that's even remotely possible? And my overall thoughts of the device, the application, and my experience with it. I've been using this for about a week, so I definitely have some thoughts as to its usability and the pros and cons of it. And I've also used it on native applications or native games that run on the iOS device. I've also used, obviously, xCloud as well. That was my spark for getting this and also remote play on both the PlayStation, Steam, and Xbox. So all three of those, I have some experience with using it. I'd also like to know what your thoughts are on mobile gaming. Are you interested in mobile games at all? Do you think it's ridiculous that you would even consider mobile gaming? Or do you think it's the future? Like, I'm really curious. I'm someone who owns basically all the consoles, and I find mobile gaming fascinating. Let me know in the comments below. So let's jump right into the, the feel, the ergonomics of the device. And as you can see, this is how you plug it in. It's not Bluetooth, you know, there's no pairing. There is a lightning device connection or a lightning connector that you plug directly into an iPhone. Also, it supports iPhone 6S and up. So it goes all the way up to like the, the 12 Pro Max and all that. What I currently have right here is an iPhone 11 plugged in. iPhone 11 is great. Uh, it's decently powerful for games. And what's great about the iPhone stuff is it's always getting more, more and more powerful. In fact, the 12, I believe is on par with like a PS4 in terms of hardware, which is pretty amazing. As it grows and develops, it potentially could surpass console power down the road, especially with the M1 chips, because we've only seen the beginning of the M1 chips and they just started putting those into the iPads, which means logically it's probably coming for the iPhones as well. So an M1 or M2 or M1X or whatever the crap, is probably coming down the road for iPhones as well. So with that thought, the mobile gaming market is already getting pretty substantial and it's only going to get bigger. And it's gonna to get to a point where it's possible that your phone is technically your main console in the future. And like I said, we're definitely not there yet, but this device gets us closer to a theoretical place of that existing, like the backbone, definitely is a good complement to your iPhone. Again, with some caveats, and we'll get to those caveats. So in terms of ergonomics and the feel and the build and all that, it is definitely plastic feeling. It's a light device. It does not add a lot of weight to the iPhone, which is actually pretty good because if it added a bunch of weight, I think that would be a cumbersome experience. You definitely don't want your iPhone or your phone device to be even heavier than it is already. It's kind of nice that it like already is lightweight. So there's no battery or anything like that inside the, the backbone controller itself. With that said, it does feel good. And I do think this is probably the most comfortable controller device for a phone outside of just hooking up a regular Xbox or PS4, or PS5 controller directly to the device. And towards the end of the video, we will get to some alternatives to this device, you know, like using an iPad or a regular uh, controller device type of stuff, or even the Razer Kishi, 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 however it's pronounced, but we'll get to that soon. So one thing that's really nice is that these triggers are actually analog triggers. So they will sense half presses and all that. Oh, they'll, they'll sense the actual amount of pressing that you're doing. Overall, the buttons feel good. The bumpers right here, the analog sticks, I would say are pretty comparable to a switch. So if you're used to just switch Joy-Cons, this feels very similar. I think it actually feels more comfortable in my hand. My hands, I should say. I do have like medium sized hands. They're not small, they're not giant or anything like that. So it does fit comfortably into my hands right here. So the analog sticks feel pretty good. In fact, I have my switch right here. So here's my switch that I bought back in March. The, like I said, these Joy-Con sticks feel pretty similar to this. Yeah, pretty, pretty similar. In fact, they even sound similar. Yeah, uh, buttons as well feel pretty similar to the switch. These have like pretty similar response feels and all that. And the D-pad's okay. It's nothing, uh, nothing crazy. The Xbox Series X D-pad is currently my favorite D-pad. That is fantastic. So as you can see with an iPhone 11 versus this, this is the, the size comparison right here. The switch is definitely bigger. Minecraft, Minecraft loaded up here. And one thing that's interesting is I've never really felt like the switch Joy-Cons handheld are that comfortable. Cause like the, this is really thin right here. This part is super thin and like, they're not necessarily ergonomically built, you know? So ergonomically when you're holding the, the backbone like this, this actually feels really comfortable. Like it, it fits in my palm right here and naturally grips the trigger. 
So overall, this feels really nice. I like the feel of holding the backbone. I feel like I can do relatively long gaming sessions with this. You know, I can go a couple hours pretty easily without it feeling kind of cramped or whatever. Kind of, I mean, it depends on the game, obviously. Like if I'm playing Call of Duty Mobile, <laughs> which I had never done before until this. That one can kind of be more fatiguing on the hands. Overall, the way this feels, the comfort level, I think is pretty stellar. I'm relatively surprised at how good that feels as opposed to like the Switch. Now, you know, you might be someone who thinks the Switch is fantastic in terms of ergonomics and feels great in the hands. Not saying you're wrong. This is a preference thing. The Switch is decent, but I still prefer using a Pro Controller or some other controller with my Switch if I'm gonna do a longer gaming session. So yeah, the ergonomics feel surprisingly good. The button layout feels good. And with the phone connected in here, it like it adds the proper weight to where this feels how it should. It feels weighted enough to be using it. This all connects to the Backbone app and the Backbone app really is kind of like 50% of this setup. So in terms of additional button layout type of stuff, you've got a screen capture button right here. So you can just hold it and it will screen capture which is great. And then if you just click it once, you've got screen capture broadcast type of thing. It says broadcast, which is kind of weird. I feel like it should say screen record. The only thing it's 30 FPS and I think it's like 20 or up to 30 Mbps. It will be 1080p and it won't be the highest frame rate possible. So hit this again, stop broadcast. Great. Now the other thing is there's the uh, dedicated backbone button right here. So anytime you press the backbone button, this thing right here, it brings you to the Backbone app, and this is where you can uh, get your recordings. So if you press the options or menu button right here, then you go over to your recordings right here, and then you can see what you made. And it is only 30 FPS. So things to consider right there. I don't really know if it's just better to use the built-in screen recorder for iOS or not. I know that the quality is technically a little bit higher, like you can get higher frame rates or 60 FPS on there. So if you are concerned about getting 60 FPS versus 30 FPS for a screen recording, then that is something to consider. But yeah, back to the ergonomics. I really think that they did a great job with the feel of this uh, device. Again, it's light. So at first you might think it kind of feels cheap, but once you hook it up to a phone and you have this little thing strapped in there, it feels fantastic. And Again, there's no Bluetooth type of muckery going on right there. So the latency is basically non-existent. It feels just locked in. It feels like it's dedicated to the device. So when you are using an app or features that do support a controller, then it's spot on and feels great. So back to the Backbone application here, it is really nice that at any point you can hit this button and it brings it to the Backbone app, which kind of makes it feel like a, a console, you know, like hitting the Xbox or the PS4, uh, PlayStation logo button gives you that console experience, but it brings up the home screen and kind of has like a centralized hub or is a hub for your uh, console. This is simulating that, which is really nice and gives you a bunch of options here for things to check out, like what's on the app store, things that you can stream like xCloud, and you can even make like shortcuts that are your, uh, your go-to kind of shortcuts on there. So that's pretty nice. They do have like clips on here. Yeah, trending highlights, but they're like two months old. <laughs> Are these yeah, five months old in this? Is this just dead? Might be. So the Backbone app also has a bunch of social features, which I will be perfectly honest with you, I have not tried out because I don't have a friend currently with the Backbone. Also, I wouldn't really use it that way for myself. Like if I'm doing mobile gaming, I'm usually just going about it by myself. If I do anything multiplayer wise, it's usually just like quick matching or quick lobby type of stuff. One thing that I have not mentioned yet is it does have a headphone jack right here which is awesome because most phones, most iPhones specifically, don't have a headphone port anymore. So you can plug this guy in through the lightning jack and then you automatically get a jack for your headphone port right there, which can also be your mic and all that. So that's really nice, right? So again, with the social features, you can have up to eight people in a party, start a party, assuming that they all are on backbone. And that is one thing. They all have to be using this device and be on the Backbone app to be able to start that social feature party type of stuff. And also, if you do have friends on here, it will let you know what they're playing. You know, if like someone starts playing Call of Duty Mobile, you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna hop on too because I'm playing Call of Duty Mobile and let's party up and all that. So it brings it closer towards that uh, console experience. If that's what you're looking for specifically on a mobile phone. But again, for me, that's not what I'm using this device for. I wanted like a really nice controller type of feel that would uh, get me closer to feeling like a console or possibly a Switch replacement. And obviously the Switch is not gonna get replaced. <laughs> I'm well aware of that. But 
This does make me contemplate whether or not I would actually bring this over a Switch, depending on what I'm playing, if I'm not playing any Nintendo-specific titles at the moment. Now, another nice feature is you can actually plug in a power adapter to the lightning port on the bottom right here. So if you want to play for really long sessions and you don't want to drain your battery on your phone, you have the option to plug directly in right there. I also tried some other adapters specifically the HDMI, the lightning to HDMI adapter, that does not work. So if you were thinking about plugging a lightning adapter into here to give you an HDMI output to then capture into a streaming setup, currently does not work. And I don't think it is going to work in the future. I think the lightning adapter thing just supports basically power and a headphone jack. And I think that was their original intention of this. When you do plug in the adapter for an HDMI thing, it, it recognizes that you did plug in that and says, hey, you must be a streamer. We have a solution coming for you in the future, but it's not ready yet. As of July 14th, 2021, the date that I'm currently recording this video. So is there any cons with this particular hardware? The biggest con is that you have to take your iPhone case out. If you have a bulky iPhone case, it will not work. In fact, the majority of the iPhone cases out there basically do not work with this setup. The things that will work are ones that are basically super low profile where it's exposing the bottom of your phone, basically. Maybe the top and bottom. If there's any kind of bulk that wraps around here that like really protects your phone, it's not gonna work with this device. And that's almost a deal breaker, honestly. Like if you're using this to go out and bring it on a train or something, or you're traveling and you have to pop out your case in the middle of doing that to then put it into this device, like that's pretty close to a deal breaker for me. And would definitely make me think, well, I could just bring my Switch, even though it's another device and more weight. At least I'm not dealing with popping my iPhone case off and all that. So honestly, it's a big caveat for me. That being said, if you're looking for a little mobile device at home, like this works out really well. Or if you maybe you have a iPhone from last year or something that you upgraded from, you could technically just use that caseless for a device like that. But it kind of defeats the purpose of this being a mobile solution that's also your cellular device. Speaking of mobile stuff, xCloud. Is xCloud good <laughs> on an iOS device? The answer is it's complicated. It works and it doesn't, and it's highly dependent on your internet connection. Sometimes I'm playing it and I have no lag whatsoever. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. And then suddenly just massive lag, just unplayable lag so it kicks in again. July 14th, 2021, this is technically beta for xCloud. xCloud isn't officially 100% launched and it's not even in all areas in the world yet. So this is definitely a work in progress and this technology will get better over time. But as it is right now of the recording of this, I experienced questionable results with xCloud. Could I just jump in and check Xur's inventory in Destiny? Absolutely, or you need to go buy a mod or something like that uh, from one of the, the vendors. Yeah, it's totally fine with that. But if you need to do any kind of like legitimate aiming or <laughs> multiplayer, like I don't think it's gonna work for most people. So I'm in a pretty ideal location. I'm in Northern California. You know, I'm right next to the tech industry over in the Bay Area. And my experience is kind of rocky with this. Again, it does work. Like it will load up games and it's really cool to see it in action. But when I load up something like Destiny and actually try to aim and shoot stuff, sometimes it's fine, sometimes. And then sometimes it's complete garbage, like unusable, lagging all over the place. Also, I noticed sometimes the audio just completely stops working, which is weird. I don't know if that's just a, uh, a bug on my device specifically, if it's an xCloud bug or if an iOS bug, I'm not really sure. So in terms of uh, real world usability, like mm, I kind of give it a D minus. I personally wouldn't play a lot of games with that happening, with like the a lag spike suddenly making it unplayable for like a minute and then it coming back to being semi-normal. And again, it just highly depends on the internet connection. I tried it with my cellular, my 4G cellular, LTE, and it was pretty much the same results where it was pretty unreliable, didn't really, it wasn't fluid, wasn't that usable. For maybe like a turn-based game, you know, like you could do something like that, but at that point, it's like, why not just play a game on your phone, you know, instead of streaming it? I think the interface is awesome. And again, all this works with the controller on here, so it just, it feels like you're using a uh, an actual console. Now, obviously, Game Pass is incredible. Game Pass Ultimate like gives you a bunch of options to play, and the XCloud feature uh, has a lot of them in the library that you can actually just jump in. 
Again, Destiny is good to go. Halo. I tried Halo, and again, it was one of those things where it was like, it's working, it's working, it's working, kind of working, kind of working. Oh boy, that's a lot of lag. Yeah, so xCloud, I mean, it works in quotations, but I still feel like it has a, uh, a ways to go. I am on Wi-Fi because like there's no ethernet jack in my phone right here. And it's just kind of hit or miss. You know, I've, there's been a lot of people who have tweeted me and said, hey, xCloud is actually really great. I use it on the road and it's like, it works. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that it's working for people out there. I'm hoping that they get it to a point where it's like 99% of the people out there can load up xCloud and it works out great. Like that'd be incredible, right? And it would honestly usher in an era of Maybe owning the console is more of a luxury than just streaming it like Netflix. But that's a different discussion for a different video. For this specifically, if xCloud was working perfectly, this would be amazing. I, I would be blown away at being able to just hook up this type of thing to my, my phone and then launch and stream any of these games with like fluid motion controls and all that. That might be a pipe dream that never happens. <laughs> In terms of visuals, the compression seems pretty intense. You can definitely notice it. It is like you're watching a stream because it literally is a stream from another computer off in the world somewhere else into your phone. There's sacrifices that get made on that and you can tell that there's a pixelation or compression algorithm artifacts that are kicking in right there. So with that being said, there's a few other streaming options out there. You've got Xbox Remote Play, you've got PlayStation Remote Play, and you've got Steam Link remote play. Same thing. You know what I'm talking about. Also, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit the like button, drop me a comment below and subscribe to the channel. It helps with the algorithm. Let's go one by one. So Xbox remote play is great. I can actually wake up my console. In fact, my console is asleep right now. And if I go, yeah, Xbox remote play, enter that, it'll go into the Xbox app. And then what I have to do is go up to here, this little button right there, hit A, and then remote play on this device. So I hit remote play. It says remote play works best on a wired or 5G wireless connection. I am currently on a 5G wireless connection, by the way. And I should say also, I do have a bunch of devices hooked up to the network. So I really feel like this is a real world use case. All right, hit continue. There it goes. There it is. There's my console. Got a little bit of lag at the moment. The frame rate also feels a little choppy too. So I can jump in my game library and I can launch any of these games and launch some Destiny, some Halo, Sea of Thieves, all that stuff. It's cool. And also I can wake it up directly when it's sleeping because it has that instant on feature, which is really nice. So instant on, wake it up, and then just pop down in the room upstairs. And suddenly I'm playing directly on my console, which is pretty cool. So now let's talk about Sony Remote Play. It does not have instant on. You cannot wake it up. What I found, at least for me, is that I have to actually log into my PS5 for it to be talking to the internet. And so it can say, yeah, I'm right here. And then my PlayStation Remote app will find it. You do have to sync it up initially, just like you do with the Xbox and all that's pretty straightforward type of stuff. You know, you punch in a number or whatever and they do a handshake and they say, yeah, let's be friends. But with the PS5, you do have to handhold it a little bit more. You, you can't just like leave on vacation or whatever and then be like, oh, I wish I could do this thing real quick on the game before it shuts off whatever service. Let me remote play into PS5. Doesn't work that way. Xbox, you could if you leave it in instant on mode. So, you know, that's the only thing. I will say that the performance on PlayStation Remote felt about the same as Xbox Remote. So it seems like the technologies are pretty par or on par with each other. And there was some weird frame jitter type of stuff going on. And there was times where the Wi-Fi network was having some issues, some frame drops here and there. Nothing as bad as xCloud. xCloud, I would have severe drops in service to the point where I thought the game was gonna disconnect. But on both Xbox and PlayStation, what would happen is I'd have some like, some little bit more lag would kick in, like a, a bit more, and then it would recover and then it would go back to feeling smooth. That is one thing I should say, both on the Xbox and the PS5, it felt actually really smooth. Like there was pretty minimal delay. Almost like going back to what Destiny 1 felt like on the original consoles, <laughs> if you remember how that feels. All things considered, that's pretty remarkable that they're able to do that. So yeah, I think both Xbox and Sony Remote Play, they're on par with each other in terms of quality of service. Xbox takes the cake though, in terms of instant on and being able to just wake it up from its slumber and say, let me load in, let me jump in. And then finally we have Steam Link where you can take control of your Steam library on a computer and stream it directly to your phone. This service was actually the best out of all of them for me. And I think it's because my computer is actually wired in via LAN cable in. So I, I definitely experienced the smoothest gameplay from that, from the PC. The PC is an i7 7700K with an RTX 3070. Yes, I know the CPU is getting pretty ancient at this point. It's time for an upgrade, right? But that should give you a sense, you know, like that was definitely 
performing better than the consoles via, via a wired connection versus wireless. Wired versus wireless definitely makes a difference on there, but it's also possible that the PC Steam Link might be a little more worked out in terms of bugs, potentially. This is not scientific. In fact, maybe you guys have more experience with this. I would love to hear your thoughts about it. So if you've got experience with using Xbox Remote Play or PS5 Remote Play or, or PlayStation Remote Play or Steam Link and all that, let me know. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Like, have you used it extensively? Have you been on trips, logged in? You know, did you have hiccups? You know, I'm really curious about that stuff. Same thing with xCloud. Like if you're one of these people who have gone to various locations, gone to a hotel and used xCloud and it was good, I'd like to know, cause that's actually amazing, it seems like. And also I don't have a 5G connection on my phone yet. You know, I have an iPhone 11, there's no 5G on there. Maybe if I upgrade to a 5G phone in the future, maybe my connection on that is going to be better possibly. It still requires a good 5G connection wherever I'm at, so there is still that barrier that you have to pass. Again, I'd like to know your experience if you are using a 5G iPhone 12 and have used xCloud. Like, I'm curious. All right, now that we have the remote play type of stuff talked about out of the way, the best things for this particular setup is the local games the local iOS supported games that actually can use a controller. And that's actually pretty recent. It's only been about a couple years. Like it was 2019, I believe, when they finally brought in controller support for an iOS or an iOS system. So you can actually hook up like an Xbox controller or a PS4 controller and all that. And those do work really nice. Like it, it's actually surprising. For a while there, I was playing Genshin Impact on my iPad, my iPad Pro, and just hooked up a controller and like that was my daily driver for logging in, doing dailies for Genshin Impact. So that said, this particular setup is phenomenal for local games. And again, this is the iPhone 11, you know, it's not the latest. The iPhone 12 is more powerful and the iPhone 13 or 12S or whatever the crap they're gonna call it is going to be further powerful down the road. All things considered, stuff on the mobile front is definitely gonna get better as time goes by. With this controller setup, it's actually pretty fantastic. Like I was surprised at how good Call of Duty Mobile felt. I mean, you basically have the feeling of a controller with this, like it's not really missing the controller experience aside from just not feeling like an Xbox or a PS4 controller, PS5 controller. So I was really surprised at how good Call of Duty Mobile felt on this. Again, I'm not like a pro at playing Call of Duty Mobile. This is the first time playing it this past week. So I'm, it's pretty fresh, but I was surprised as a fan of first person shooters at how well it felt playing with this setup. I was like, wow, I could actually see myself just jumping in a few matches, just casually playing Call of Duty Mobile just because it's fun with this particular setup and it feels good. So kudos to mobile gaming for that. Like I was genuinely surprised. Then you got indie games. I mean, Dead Cells here, it plays fantastic on this setup. Again, this controller feels fantastic. The game is nice and responsive and it's great. Now again, you can hook up at the controllers. There's a lot of options here to consider. And then you got Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact finally added the controller support a few months ago. And that's why I started playing it exclusively on the iPad. With this particular setup, you have a nice, Genshin Impact a mobile type of gaming experience that feels very similar to a, an actual controller, because it is. It's basically a controller hooked up to Genshin Impact. I would have no problems using that setup for Genshin Impact on a semi full-time basis, because it just works, it's nice. I also played Terraria with it. I played Minecraft, obviously, as you saw earlier. All of them feel really good. If you're used to using controller for those games, then I don't think you're gonna suddenly feel hindered using this particular setup. It feels very natural and comfortable. Now an honorable mention is Apple Arcade. I don't personally subscribe to the service. I've never even used the, the free 30 day trial or anything like that. But it should be noted that this is like a, a game service that you can use to jump in and start playing games. And if it supports a controller for the particular title, then you're good to go with this Apple Arcade scenario. And I think like the majority of these games do support controllers. So Apple itself is also swinging pretty hard at this market because, you know, they already know that they make a bunch of money on games with the iOS devices. And they know that in the future, mobile gaming is only gonna grow, clearly. And the more they start supporting this side of it, getting more into like a console side, or at least support the software to be potentially console-ish with the whole setup, I'm sure they want to position themselves to be able to capture as much of that market as possible. So it's gonna get supported and it's gonna continue down the road. Between xCloud, your remote play type of stuff, local games that you could just buy, and then obviously Apple Arcade, like you have a fairly robust setup for gaming, assuming your internet can actually handle some of the streaming. Because if it can't, then you're just limited to what you can purchase, download, or use an Apple Arcade, which is still a lot. 
Don't get me wrong, there's still quite a bit of titles and there's always new stuff coming out. Let's talk about some alternatives. I've, again, I've already mentioned basically controllers. You know, like you can use an Xbox controller or you can use a PS4 controller, PS5 controller. There's third party controllers that you can also use that can sync up with Bluetooth. One of the caveats is that it's all Bluetooth based for the majority of those, so you do have a little bit of delay that's being introduced with those. I don't think it's enough to be a deal breaker, personally. Like I said, I played Genshin Impact with a controller on an iPad, Xbox controller synced up via Bluetooth. It was fine for me. So those are absolute alternatives that you can use. And you probably already have one of those controllers. So you're like technically good to go for that setup. <laughs> like if you have one of those phones with a kickstand on there, you like pop out, you know, boop, pop out kickstand that just sits up like that. And just throw your controller in the bag kickstand your phone and be like, good to go like that. So that's nice, right? So what's the pro then of using something like this? It feels really good to hold in your hand and look directly at the device. It feels a lot like Switch, honestly. And then you also have the Backbone app as well, which kind of gives you that console-ish experience. So technically you'd miss out on the Backbone app if you went with the controller route instead. The other benefit of using the controller route is if you do have something like an iPad Pro that also works with an iPad Pro. This is not going to work with an iPad Pro. It's a lightning connection, not a USB-C connection. In terms of direct competition, the Razer Kishi exists. It's pretty comparable, honestly. Like, you know, you got a lightning port that connects in there, basically the same type of button layout type of stuff. You don't have a headphone jack though. You do have a lightning port adapter that's a pass-through for, uh, for power. It doesn't look as ergonomically comfortable because it's got this like wedge thing. Actually, it looks closer to the Switch, like this, maybe a little bit smaller because it's like these rounded bevels. Personally, I don't think that's as comfortable. You might find it comfortable. And honestly, if you have experience with the Razer Kishi, let me know, I'd like to know. Drop a comment below, let me know if it's a good device. And should I compare it? If enough of you guys think I should do a comparison between Backbone and the Razer product, let me know, say it in the comments, and then I will consider it if we get enough people interested in something like that. Now, one thing I do know about the Razer product is that its app is basically just a launcher. This is something that could change in the future, so they might make that more robust. Razer might make it more robust down the road, but I do know that the Backbone app specifically is a lot more robust in terms of being an actual console, you know, like social features, party chat and all that. The other thing too is the Razer supports Android products. So if you have an Android phone, why are you watching this video? <laughs> There's no support for Android on the Backbone, so. so that's off the top of my head. I, you know, they're both 100 bucks for the, the Razer versus uh, the Backbone. Which brings me to my final question. Did I waste $100 on this device? I don't think so. I think it's pretty good. When I started thinking about how I'd rather use this over a Switch in certain situations, I realized that I actually like this device. I wasn't 100% sure when I first got it. It felt the stretchy thing. I had to pop it out of the case and all that. I was like, oh, I don't know. It seems like a pain in the ass to do all this stuff. And then I started using it. Call of Duty Mobile, again, was surprisingly fun. Minecraft on here, you know, Genshin Impact, uh, Dead Cells. All those games just felt really good with this controller. And it actually made me really interested to see where the future of mobile gaming could go. The future of like cell phone games and the hardware connected with these type of devices made me excited. So is it worth a hundred bucks? I think so. I do. If you want to use the social features with your friends, they have to buy it too. So that is, uh, that's a caveat right there. And again, I'm still disappointed over the fact that you need to basically have your phone out of the case in order to use this. That is like the one big issue right now currently, unless I go get a super thin case. And I just, I don't know if I feel comfortable having a super thin case on my phone and like, suddenly dropping and cracking it, you know. To this day, I've never cracked a phone screen. Fingers crossed, knock on wood, that it stays that way. What do you guys think? Are you interested in the backbone? I'd like to know. Drop me a comment. Let me know if you've used it already. Uh, if you got any questions, I will try my best to answer them. Also, if you're planning on buying the backbone, consider using my affiliate link in the description below. I do get a small commission for it, but it's no additional cost to you, and it helps out the channel as well. Something to consider. And that is gonna do it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well, and ring the notification for more tech style videos. They are coming in the future. And you can also check out my other channels as well. I have a music channel with my wife, Memes. I also have a vlog channel as well with my wife, Memes. I will see you next time for another video. Deuces.